Okay. Welcome to the Power Friendship Podcast. Okay? And today is the best day of the week because we're recording on Saturday. So surprise, it's Saturday. <laughs> we usually record on Sunday, but it's episode 73. 72? 73, right? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, 73. Okay, and we have a special guest today. The GOAT. Let's go. Coach Frizzle. What up? How's it going, everybody? <laughs> 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 uh, we at, we're all, we've been trying to do this for a bit, but Coach Frizzle mm-hmm. is really cool, really dope. Introduce yourself. Yeah, what's going on, everybody? Um, my name is Rusty, aka Coach Frizzle, um, <laughs> aka the Miss Frizzle of Fitness. Not just Frizzle for the curly hair, um, but it works. So there we have it. I'm uh, I'm an online fitness coach, health and fitness coach, um, and basically my biggest motto is just keeping it real. I mean, if we're going to take, uh, you know, a note out of the, uh, the Frizz's actual books, um, you know, take chances, make mistakes. I think it's get messy. I'm going to change it to get jacked, but, uh, um, I basically am an online presence at this point, only ripping off, uh, the Frizz, but from a, a fitness and nutrition standpoint. So try and keep it fun, try and keep it educational, try and keep it real. Let's do Awesome, awesome. Uh, this is my co-host, Benny J. Blanco, and I am Sailor Games 18. Thank you for hanging out with us. Follow, rate, all that good stuff. Uh, uh, I'm forgetting. Oh, tell your mom, tell your dad, we love you, and drink your water, and have a great, we're going to have a great time. We have a gay old time here. Okay, first off, we got, uh, so what it, would you say is your specialty as a coach? Ooh, um, you know, it's hard in today's day and age to not say, like, you know, focus on like weight loss and fat loss, because let's be honest, most of society is always looking to lose weight, to lose fat. Um, But I would say my biggest thing is I'm really about empowering people. Um, You know, I think that a lot of people, especially adults, I mostly work with, you know, people, let's say above the age of 25, basically anyone who's old enough to remember what the magic school bus was. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But uh, I really... (laughs) My specialty is like working with people who want to feel stronger and more confident in like the the big three areas, we'll say, Um, you know, their body, the gym and the kitchen. Um, So whatever that looks like, whether getting more confident means, you know, losing a little bit of weight, that's totally fair. Whether more confident means, you know, just focusing on strength, focusing on what your body can do, focusing on, um, you know, actually eating more than 1500 calories and like yes. being healthy Please. and managing your weight. Um, then let's do it. Let's make it happen. But overall, I would say like my area of specialty is like working with people who want to just feel more empowered and more confident in their life, whatever way that looks. Okay. Nice. Nice. What is it? Oh no, God! Sorry. <laughs> You're a busy what man. Is, <laughs> what is the uh, what is your uh, style of encouragement? Like, how do you encourage people to work out? Hmm. Um. You know what? I'm definitely not like a boot camp type of instructor, um, which would honestly also be hard to do, seeing as I'm just online, because it'd be very aggressive uh, messages or voice notes. I guess I would have to leave. <laughs> um, <laughs> but for me, you know, it's about the why. Like anytime I work with somebody, first of all, I like get them to fill out a really like lengthy questionnaire. Um, And then I like take a look at it, see if we're a good fit. We set up a call, we go from there. But one of the questions in the questionnaire is like, what's your why? Why do you want to do this? Because everybody's got to have a why. And at the end of the day, I like that. Yeah. Like, and I mean, let's, let's be honest, no matter what your why is, is not an easy journey. Fitness, nutrition, like, there's a whole psychological aspect to fitness and nutrition that does not go well with anything we want to do. Like as humans, we are not designed, um, psychologically speaking, to want to make ourselves uncomfortable. Like our basic desire is, um, our basic desires are something like, um, um, to like experience, not joy, but like basically do do as little as possible while avoiding pain avoiding pain is one of the biggest things and let's be honest like working out getting uncomfortable is kind of painful um right, so right, right, right. having a why is one of the biggest ways to improve your willpower and when i understand somebody's why it's really 
easy for me to pull back um, or pull that back into the conversation, you know, when somebody's struggling to get to the gym, when somebody, somebody's struggling to, you know, adhere to their protocol and actually follow through. Like, what was it? Why did you want to start? Why did you want to achieve X, Y, and Z? Um, just knowing the, the, the reasoning, the backing behind it is one of the easiest ways to increase somebody's willpower. And so I really play off of that. There could be some tough love sometimes because we all need it. Okay, um, true, true, true. But, you know, going back, like I said, to whatever somebody said from day one is usually the biggest thing for me in terms of helping somebody get it done. Okay. I got a question. So Mm -hmm. since you're an online coach, uh, fitness coach, is there any type of methods that you that you took inspiration of, like any local or probably major coaching celebrity that you tried to maybe tweak and Mm -hmm. mimic? in your program? Yeah, no, that's, that's an awesome question. Um, because (laughs) imposter syndrome is also really real. Um, you know, when I first got into fitness, it was all in person. Um, and so I worked for a lot of different like gyms, which I'm super thankful for because there were some really great ones that taught me a lot, but like being an online coach nowadays, um, there's a few people I would say that really contributed to me getting to this point. Um, but also it's kind of changed through the phases because I would say when I first started, I was a very soft coach. I was very, you know, just, um, it's easy. We can do it. Like, you know, balance, balance, balance. And I do believe in balance, but I also believe that like we've gone way too far with the term balance anyways. So, um, a couple people here, um, there's a influencer named uh, Michaela Z- Zazon, Zazon, I might be saying that wrong. Um, she at one point was super like uh, fitness in the gym, empowering women. Now I think she's more like body acceptance, body neutrality, which is totally cool. Um, I actually worked as a virtual assistant for her for a while, which was really cool. So she played a really big role um, at one point for me. And then honestly, I would say, I don't know if there's anyone that I've like, imitated so much but a few like big accounts that have really played into my mentality here um would of course be like lane norton and holly baxter um you know from a flexible dieting perspective and just putting out unbelievably solid information definitely um they are fantastic for learning about nutrition and food freedom um but then also like honestly some smaller accounts so uh there's an account taryn nettles if uh i think that's literally her username unbelievably smart when it comes to like hormone health um and just how to educate people um jordan syatt obviously a really big account uh my own coach dylan Fanuf, Fanuf, <laughs> uh something like that really great account um so i don't think there's anyone really that i've like imitated in the last few years but those are definitely probably the biggest accounts i would say that have had the most impact in like educating me and where i want to take my own online coaching route it's awesome awesome that's great what was your why Ooh. oh man um <laughs> you know i started when i was so young so to be honest like 16 years old in high school female you know I wanted to be asked out on dates and I was not, I was, I was very awkward. I was not comfortable (laughs) in my body. I was, uh, you know, very overweight and, um, a girlfriend and I, and I think she would say she felt the same way because obviously we talked about it at the time. We literally just wanted to lose weight. We wanted to feel beautiful as girls, as young girls. And so we started Mm -hmm. running every day. Um, and we kept that up for like a good, three years <laughs> we ran like five to ten eventually 10k um like oh, every day <laughs> yeah it was you know what it was awesome while it lasted um and then that did eventually switch over but if i'm being completely honest at 16 when i first lost weight that was really what my why was and then as that's transitioned you know into um adulthood falling in love with the gym, learning about strength training, my why has always become now. And I will say all the weight I lost when I ran, I wound up gaining back. So relearning how to do it properly um, as an adult. Again, like my why would be 
being amazed at like doing the things I never thought I could be able to do. Because at 16, even after I lost 50 pounds, I was like, you know, I can't do a pull up. I can't do a, a, a full push up. <laughs> uh, and I never thought I would be able to, let alone, you know, squat my body weight, um, deadlift two times my body weight. It's truly amazing to see like how my body has changed over the years. Absolutely. But like, how much strength, like how powerful your body truly is. Because we hear about people who like, you know, pick up a car because their baby's underneath it or, or something like that. And just like the mental aspect of being more powerful than you ever thought you could be. Um, that's probably been my why now as an adult. And then also being an online coach, a big part of my why is, of course, inspiring the people that I work with, because I don't necessarily need them to see me be shredded, but I need them to see me do what I said I'm going to do. Um, so that's th those two things are probably what keep me going now every day. Nice. That's awesome. Awesome. So what's your uh, preferred? Do you like uh, like bodybuilding, uh, powerlifting, like strongman, like What's your thing? So, What's like your favorite? I have never done strongman. Um, I like I've watched strongman uh, competitions and things like that. And like legit, <laughs> they are strong. Uh, the things that they do pulling cars and, and uh, just the like functional side of their strength is unbelievable. Um, powerlifting had my heart for quite a few years, uh, but definitely I am. Uh, like a bodybuilder at heart. Although I haven't done a competition officially yet for me, maybe okay. in the next year and a half. Um, but just the aspect, or you know what, I would almost say power building because I definitely do still a, a lot of elements from powerlifting and a lot of strength phases and things like that. But for the most part, like hypertrophy style training, um, you know, aiming at a more aesthetic style training is okay. definitely where my heart's at. Okay, cool. How do you uh, deal with like, all right, when you're not, when you're, when you're first training with someone, what's your like, your, uh, like, in, like in person, like, what should you do and what should you not do? In person? Yeah, because I always have like people ask me like, hey, come work out with me. And like, I try to like, get them into it. And I'm trying to like, ease them into it. So like, <laughs> so I go, yeah. go don't me. go overboard or go too far. I'm like, uh. <laughs> yeah, no, totally fair. I think that's that's probably like the biggest mistake. People get so hyped up, which is awesome, right? Like anytime we start some, something new, we're like, I'm going to go in, I'm going to crush it. Um, you know, it's going to be my bitch. It's, and it, it's, it, it starts off super high. The enthusiasm is amazing. But um, when when we do too much too soon because we go in with the best intentions, it's also like when we get overwhelmed um, and it just like drops down. Whereas I think going in more with the aspect of like less is more legitimately less is more. And it also builds that like positive uh, momentum that keeps people wanting to keep going. So uh, my biggest thing is like, if you're new to the gym, if you're going in for the first time, um, do, full body workouts three times a week. You're, go you're golden. Go three days a week, do full body workout, do six exercises tops and, okay. and you're set. Hit something for basically every part. Hit something, um, you know, for chest. So that's likely going to be a pushing movement. Um, let's say two pulling movements for back, two different kinds from different angles. Another push movement for shoulders, um, a pull movement for your legs. So probably hamstrings or deadlifts, glutes, something like that. And a push movement for legs. So um, something quad dominant. And then maybe you could throw in a seventh one for core um, and you're golden. That's it. You hit your full body. I promise you that'll be great for a good few months. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I always have people that come with me. I'm like, oh, I don't want to just like hurt them or like something like that. Cause I always do like, oh, basic... Seth, don't do that because you know, I can survive almost everything. I know, but like, I, I'm too. Like, I'm joking. I'm like, oh, joking. I, kinda, I don't want to scare them off. So like that. All right. So I, I like, kid, I kid. all right. Nutrition, like, what do I, right, cause I always get asked questions like, what do I eat? I always tell them just like, mm -hmm. I say like, I always say like, just eat like half of what you eat and just, or just like, uh, cause I always say get more protein, some fat, some carbs in there and you're good. That's usually, that's usually what I go to. That's my go down go to. Cause I write like, cause like, I tell them like, unless you work out, like you can't outwork a bad diet unless you're like super, mm -hmm. like, I don't like, you have amazing metabolism or like genetically you're like gifted but like i say like always diet first diet is key 
That is key. Mm-hmm. Drink your water. Drink, drink a little water. That's all you got to do. That's, that's, what, that's my thing. Just drink a little water. You'll be all right. You know, it'll, yep. it'll come off like that. But I just think, like, because right now I'm, like, I'm doing bodybuilding. It's, like, different. Just eating every two hours and, like, making sure I'm bringing my food, bringing my bag everywhere. It's, like, tough. It's really tough <laughs> to do it sometimes. But, uh-oh, I believe everybody can do it. You know what I mean? Just, uh, but but how do you, like, approach eating? Because you, like, you eat a lot of amazing things. Like, you eat, like, cool stuff. Yeah, you know what? I think that's the beauty of, like, flexible dieting is a lot of people still think, well, you know what? I'm going to say this with a grain of salt because social media is a highlight reel. We know that. True, um, and true. so true, 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 you, true, true, true. You know, I'm, I'm sharing a lot of the fun recipes I come up with, but I do eat 90% of the same things, like, every single day. Um, okay. And so, you know, if somebody was to actually uh, – I should probably do this just a day of like what I eat in a day, honestly, without it being a highlight reel, because it is very bro style food. Um, And the reality is, here's the thing people don't want to hear. There is like macros in macros out is huge, you know, flexible dieting, hitting your calories, you can really fit anything in there. And especially, Mm -hmm. you know, when you're first getting started, don't worry so much about like food composition, focus on, um, uh, or don't worry so much about like bro style eating. I'll say focus on more just like, you know, eating, eating regularly. So like you said, you know, what should you tell someone? I would say the biggest things are, um, you know, aim to eat at least four meals a day. Um, you know, a lot of people will think, Hey, I did pretty good today. I only ate twice. I'm like, no, that's not good. Your body works (laughs) off a feeding clock. Uh, you need to eat regularly. So, uh, for a lot of people, like aim to eat four four meals a day. You know, get uh, for females, get five to six ounces of uh, of protein in each meal. Um, for dudes, I would say get six to eight ounces of protein in each meal. Um, and honestly, if you are eating that four to four meals a day, for most people, that's going to take you really close to your to where your natural protein goal would be anyways. Um, and just just focus on those. Don't even worry about fats and carbs right now. Just when you're getting started, focus on, uh, yeah, four meals a day, five to six or six to eight ounces of protein in every single meal. Um, throw in, you know, at least two handfuls of veg, depending how big your hands are. <laughs> um, and like you said, drink some water. And that's a fantastic place to start. But like, Food, eating, no matter what your goals are, it doesn't have to be boring. Once you really get into a good base of it, let's say you start calorie counting, you start macro counting, you can have fun. You can have chocolate, you can have pizza, you can have ice cream. Nobody said you can't. Well, actually, there's a lot of people who say you can't, but we do not listen to them. Um, you know, it can, it can be enjoyable. So um, that's probably what I would say to start off. And then if you do switch over to macro counting to start off, focus on your calories and your protein still and your fiber, I would say. And then when you get really comfortable with it, you can start incorporating, you know, a fat content goal, a carb content goal, okay. and like get more specific from there. But again, too much too soon. You're going to overwhelm yourself. You're going to stop. You're going to do nothing. Okay. All right. I have a friend that eats like – one meal a day. I hate it so much when they say it. I hate it so much. I'm like, bruh. All right, but she said, like, she has a, she doesn't have a lot of money, which is, okay. I'm like, okay. But, like, is there, do you think there's, like, a budgetary way to eat? Like, get, like, like, get, like, I don't know. Do you have a, a solution for this? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. This is where convenience foods can um, honestly be more cost effective. A lot of people will say, you know, like, eat fresh, eat whole ingredients. And that's great in a perfect world. But there is definitely, you know, a consideration we have to make for people who are working on more of a budget, Um, you know, and and where the economy is going nowadays. A lot of people are limited in, you know, how much fresh food they're buying, because let's be honest, it is way more expensive to eat whole foods and fresh foods. Um, So with that, I would say, you know, frozen, uh, first of all, when it comes to veggies and fruits, frozen is usually cheaper. Canned is usually cheaper. Nothing wrong with that. Um, things like deli meat, canned chicken. I know a lot of people are like canned chicken. That's gross. First of all, (laughs) don't knock it till you try it. (laughs) Um, but canned chicken, canned tuna, buying in bulk is going to be a huge saver here. Um, but then even things like, you know, um, Protein powder obviously is convenient, but it can be a little bit more expensive. So I would honestly say don't worry so much about like protein bars and powders, but go for more of the like 
pre-prepared, excuse me, pre-packaged foods because they are going to be cheaper and there's nothing wrong with them. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them. But I know that this is very like person by person dependent, but also place by place dependent because some parts of Canada, the U.S., I know are way more expensive for the expensive, excuse me, for the exact same foods right. than other parts. So it's a it's a hard question for sure, but there is way there are ways you can budget absolutely and um, and eat more regularly than once a meal, once a day. <laughs> once, yeah, because I was like, once a day? How do you? I don't even. And it's not even like eating; it's like a drink. I don't oh know. no! <laughs> yeah, it's like it's just that... caffeine. I was like, um, how do I do it? Like, uh, how do you eat? How do you survive? So I try to like stay away from. I try to say get some carbs, some um, sweet potatoes, some or like you can go to like, Wawa get a yogurt and some protein and be all good to go. Yeah. But I don't know why she doesn't listen to me and it's weird. <sighs> yeah, it's I will pray for her because her body <laughs> one meal a day as a drink is not is Hold not going to be too good. Hold on. Hold on. I thought he was done. <laughs> I thought he was dead. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm sorry, guys. Sorry, it's me. It's me. It's me. <laughs> no worries. It sounds, me. Like he's doing, it sounds like he's going in your house, man. Okay, take two. Take two. <laughs> take two. Oh, take two. God, every time. I thought he was done. Oh, no. brother. Sorry. Leave for you. I apologize. Oh, so I got a question. So, uh, yeah. So obviously, like you said, like social media is a big, 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 uh, just big platform basically for people to now, like there's no excuse for you not to work out obviously now. You can do it virtually or you can do it in person. But knowing that a lot of people spend a lot of times on their phone and looking at certain people, mainly celebrities, what, what would you say like is a positive way of working out and a negative way of working out, like a celebrity, mm. like a good celebrity and a bad celebrity, I guess, image-wise? Yeah, I mean, I think that I hope it's becoming clearer because at one point with social media, it really wasn't clear, you know, um, who is basically putting on this facade of, like, perfection and, you know, um, here's only the good angles of me in the gym and here's only the, like, clean things that I eat and things like that. I would say that, like, though, when we're really looking at working out, you want you want to look at somebody's profile as a whole um, because the message that they're putting out, like, if it's if they're working out from a place of, I, I want to be careful here because I also think that it's important to recognize every profile is targeting a different demographic. And if you come across somebody's profile where you feel like you're not connecting, that doesn't necessarily mean that their message is bad. It just might not be the message for you. So like somebody who is a fitness competitor is probably going to look a lot more negative. Um, like they are, you know, kind of being a, um, a jerk to their bodies in the gym, a jerk to themselves in the gym, a jerk to themselves nutritionally, to somebody who's trying to find more food freedom. But for another competitor, that would be super inspirational. Um, so I think you need to look at like the profile of the entire profile. Like what is somebody's mission? What are they working towards? And do you possibly fit that demographic before we're like, oh, this is a bad influencer or a negative influencer? Um, but at the same time, of course, there are people who just, you know, really come at things from the wrong way. So, uh, you know, if if they're kind of talking about like guilt, if they're talking about, you know, Thanksgiving, we just had Thanksgiving. I know Thanksgiving is coming up for you guys. But if they're putting out that message of like, you know, uh, I'm eating a big meal tonight, so I got to get into the gym this morning, you know, or got to get into the gym tomorrow because I ate so much food. These are just red flags, no matter what, in my opinion, that um, we need to be careful of. And then likewise, I personally am a really big fan now of uh, profiles that show, you know, people who are working out and grunting and making, I'm a grunter, so obviously I'm biased, but who are making those funny faces because to be honest, 
Nobody is smiling when they're mid-set. Nobody is, no. like, perfect angled, no. um, smiling. Yeah. Like, when I see these <laughs> these photos, I'm like, this is ridiculous, especially when it's, like, a photographer. Uh, I'm just like, you know, if we're going to actually film ourselves in the gym, then let's film ourselves in the gym. And uh, it is not pretty. So I think it's just, like, the vibe you're looking for. Um, and I hope actually more even companies that hire a lot of these influencers start to get on board with that because this image of like perfection is a little uh, played out. Like it's 2022. Let's, let's, let's move forward. Bit, bit. All right. As a coach, like, all right, the steroids come up like with you, like a lot mm. or like, how do you feel about it? Like, do you talk about it or like, what's your, what's your, what's your take on it? Oh man. Um, so I get, I get asked quite a bit about, you know, steroids, if I use, if I, um, you know, if, if I've ever used and I haven't, um, you know, I'll be honest, if I compete, will I possibly consider it? Maybe. I'm not sure right now. Um, it depends on what level I plan to get to. Um, and on that note, I think steroids is a very personal, very, very personal choice. Just like, to be honest, like birth control for women. Um, there isn't really a right or wrong here. It's just about like what works for the individual. But I will say that, um, you know, I think a lot of people consider steroids like way before they need to. Um, you need to be like, you better be wor like in the gym, working on your nutrition consistently, not on and off, consistently um, and at the point of like 95 to 100 percent, you know, on target, on plan, consistent for years and years before you even consider steroids, in my opinion, because everybody has a genetic potential. Um, so like how far their body can progress before introducing things like anabolics. And most people never actually push themselves hard enough to begin with to see what their genetic potential is. And now they're thinking about using steroids. And I think that's where, you know, things um, just shouldn't go. I think you should really like push yourself first before you go. And then just make sure you're, you're like really educated. If you're never going to work with a coach, at least work with somebody you respect if you're going to get into the topic of anabolics and steroids. Because again, like with birth control, you need to know all the facts and you are hormonally messing with your body in some way. So you better know everything you're getting into before you get into it. Um, so it depends. <laughs> Because I, I was like, I don't want to ask this question without sounding, like, weird. And I was like, okay. I mean, no, no. Like, I feel like it's not talked about enough. Like, nobody talks about it. So I'm like, I was like, I just want to know. Like, what's your thoughts on it? I'm like, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, like, it's really hard. I think, you know, especially if, if you are going to compete in bodybuilding and you want to go super far, of course, there is a natural division to do that. Um, but... You know, if you want to go very far, it's going to come up at some point, and you just got to make that decision for you. Right, right, right. So, what do you think about all the, the bodybuilders' deaths and stuff like that? Does that like trigger you or something like that? Or, like, you know what? I th I think it's horribly sad. First of all, um, with some of the ones that have been older, like I, I probably don't know enough to be honest on on the topic of like mm -hmm. what's going on, but I think. Um, one thing from what I understand, if I'm correct, one thing is that in the deaths we're seeing for, you know, the guys that are 40 plus, um, I don't think that in their era, they were as concerned with like getting their blood work done and their okay. internal health. And that's, that's a huge thing, um, to understanding truly what's going on in your body. Like, yes, you can understand steroids and you can understand how to cycle them and, you know, take anabolics and, and whatnot. But if you're not looking at truly what's going on physiologically, what, what your blood work is, what your thyroid is, um, there could be so many things going on behind the scenes and you don't know. And from what we're hearing, like these guys are just dropping dead but again i think there might be a correlation to the fact that in their era there was not as much of a uh care or concern for blood work and internal health um but it's super sad it's it's horrible and so i hope that if anything what people are taking from it is it doesn't matter you know how lean you are or how jacked you are uh you know how much chicken and, and broccoli and rice you eat there could be things going on behind the scenes you gotta go get your blood work done 
Yeah, you could drop dead fast unless you don't, you know, obviously check yourself. That's always a big, big deal. Always regularly check yourself, no matter what. You yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. How I, often? Uh, you... No, sorry. Sorry. No, Are no. I was going to say I completely agree. <laughs> How often should you get your blood work done? In a perfect world, um, you know, I would say. Well, it depends on the goal we're working on. Um, if you can do it every six months, that's amazing. But you know, it's also usually pretty expensive unless you have some great benefits. Even here, like as much as we have healthcare, it's really unfortunate. Um, because if we go to our doctors and request blood work, a lot of doctors don't want to do it, um, which is sad because, you know, if we're trying to take care of ourselves and we're willing to pay for it, just give me the damn blood work. Um, <laughs> yep. So, um, yeah, honestly, in a perfect world, if you could go every six months, that's great, especially if you are working on something like, you know, your hormone health, your thyroid health. Um but otherwise, even just once a year, like a full panel where you are looking at, you know, your sex hormones, um, your thyroid, your liver, uh, everything, a full panel, it will probably cost you like $300, but it will pay off huge for understanding what's going on in your Man, body. That's wild. Because I got binds uh, uh, late last year. <laughs> and I mean, thank goodness I have, I mean, because I know it's different from Canada and America. Like I have health insurance. And mm -hmm. that covered like ninety percent of it, so I didn't even have to pay almost everything. But yeah, like everything was good with me. I was scared too because I was just like, because I kind of eat a lot because <laughs> I mean I, I burned away a lot of the weight, and this is before I started getting heavy in the gym with Tev. So, mm -hmm. but they were like everything is good and positive. So I was like, thank That's goodness, awesome. thank goodness, yeah. Let's uh, let's be honest. Blood work. I, I'm I'm somebody. I hate tests. Period. I hate Same. tests. Same. Same. Just, Same. Like, Same. man. Yeah, you could be like, I feel good. Like, I don't. You know, I'm not worried. And you go get that test, and you're just like waiting for the results to come in. Oh. Your doctor to call. Oh, <laughs> the God, the anxiety just like for their tests. Head. They're like, yeah, like we gotta talk, buddy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> honestly, and uh, I don't know how it is for you guys, but. Thankfully, actually, I have a doctor now that's not like this, but my old doctor used to call and say, like, oh, we got your blood work. The doctor wants to see you. And then I'm like, oh, God, something's wrong, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then I go see her and she's like, oh, yeah, you're good. I'm like, bitch, why couldn't you have just told me this on the phone? <laughs> like, <laughs> why? <laughs> it's brutal. <laughs> like, just tell us. Oh, I'm man. That's how you feel. That's how you feel. All right. I yeah. All right, as a coach, what is your favorite thing to see? Like, what warms your heart as a coach? You should see for your clients. Mm, um, honestly, like, there's a couple things. Um, one of the biggest ones right off the hop is just, like, so I do weekly check-ins with all of my clients. They answer, like, okay. a list of questions for me. Um, and, you know, I ask a lot of biofeedback-related questions. So, obviously, we got to know how your stress is, your sleep, if you're pooping. Um, but... We have some okay. fun questions in there as well. Just like, you know, tell me about a highlight of your week or whatever. And on a weekly basis, hearing about the like changes. So whether people are progressing in the gym, but like the big ones for me are honestly, because I do work with predominantly women, um, most of whom have had a shitty relationship with food as even I myself have. Um, it's a really hard thing. And hearing from women that they're like, you know, I'm going out to restaurants and I'm not binging anymore. Or, you know, I, I now feel that, like, okay, mm -hmm. saying no to eating something that I would have before felt like obligated to, or I had no control with. Um, those are probably the biggest things for me. And then of course, like, you know, hearing somebody say like, my energy levels are up, my sex drive is back. Um, I feel good in my clothes again. These are all like, phenomenal things that you hope people would feel on an everyday basis but like our relationship with our bodies our food gets skewed from such young ages that like helping people rediscover basically or possibly even discover for the first time like their own again strength empowerment love for their themselves uh love for food is probably the biggest thing um that's probably the, yeah the thing that like really gets me the most um, and then any of my clients that have kids, I absolutely love it when they're like, oh, my kid was like for if they have a home gym, like working out with me this week, because I think the earlier we introduce it to kids and the more natural we make it seem like we're just setting them up way better long term. <laughs> so I like that, too. 
Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So uh-huh. be- before <laughs> you became a fitness coach, what did you want to be when you wanted to grow up? Oh, when I was real little, uh, I was obsessed. I'm still obsessed with animals. I love animals. So when I was a kid, I was like, I'm going to be a vet. Um, definitely glad I didn't wind up doing that because obviously as a kid too, you don't realize that like you also got to help put animals down sometimes, which is traumatic. (laughs) Um, but, uh, after that, honestly, um, oh, puppers. Yeah. (laughs) they're the best man animals are the best um Mm. and like thank god i don't know how how hard covid hit you guys like how long you were locked down we were locked down for so long and so like didn't see people for so long and we have a dog uh and a cat and she's like they're like your best friends animals are Mm -hmm. the best she was Um, sleeping i think she's mad at me now (laughs) yeah she's like (laughs) that's awesome um but uh I honestly, what were we saying? <laughs> now I'm looking at my, do- I'm looking at my dog through the window, and I'm like, oh, Daisy. <laughs> oh yeah. It's a veterinarian. Uh, so I actually played sports, uh, like really competitively. Um, I played specifically basketball really competitively. Um, I was pretty good, if I do say so myself. Okay. okay. So, what position? Um, I was a point guard. Um, okay. but I, uh, I almost got recruited to actually go play college ball out here in Canada. And the reason why I say wow. almost is because I really wasn't sure. So when I was young, I was like, I'm gonna play pro ball hundred percent. And then I just really wasn't sure if I wanted to do that anymore. So, uh, I also didn't know what I wanted to study in college afterwards. So I didn't wind up going that route. Um, mm-hmm. and then during my couple of years off after high school, I had been like in the gym, lifting weights. I started seeing a gentleman who was really encouraging for me in terms of like, you're good at this, you're smart, like you should think about being a trainer. And uh, at that point, when I did finally go to college, I had two acceptance letters. One was to health and fitness, and the other one was actually for radio broadcasting because I used to DJ on the side as like a side hustle. So. I was really torn, like, what do I want to do? And then I decided, um, yeah, no, health and fitness was more my thing. So what? that was the route we oh, went. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. What? Yeah. You're a DJ? Yeah. yeah, it was, uh, I know. It was awesome. I love music. I love, my mom raised us with, like, our house was never quiet. Ever, ever, ever. So music was just, like, always in our blood. And, like, every kind of genre, every type. Um and I still absolutely love music. I still have all my DJ equipment. It just is dusty now. I never, I never do DJ'd. it anywhere. When, when Pardon? Last when last time you DJed? Oh, man. Years now. Um, like eight years. It's been a really long time. We Before COVID, we, we would throw a lot of house parties and I'd bring everything out. But even then, I would just like set up a playlist and go because I wanted to, you know, party. <laughs> um, <laughs> So it would just play in the background, but, uh, it's super, again, just like basically any, any career that's got a good vibe. I'm, I'm in it. I'm there. Uh, we should, why don't you DJ at the gym? They should do that. Yeah. Can you imagine? That'd be dope. I feel, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. You never know. DJ, uh, I could have used frizzle, I guess, for that too. But at the time I never, uh, I never thought about it. <laughs> That'd be sick. <laughs> That'd be yeah. sick. Um, I have, all right. So like, all right. Do you get a lot of hate for being a coach? Like, like a, like a fitness mm. coach? Um, it's hit or miss as my following has gotten bigger. I find the hate is less. Um, I think when you're on like a smaller account, which is a sad thing because like, who really cares how many followers you have, if your content is good and your information is right. But I think haters feel like they can bully you easier when you don't have a big following, which is crazy. Cause again, who cares? Um, but I would say, here's the thing. When I was in college, like for health and fitness, I had a female professor who was really hard on me um, and would always, it felt like she was always picking on me, always singling me out. Um, And then one day she had actually asked me to stay after class, after I gave a presentation. And again, she just like kept me up there so long, questions, questions, questions. 
And then she asked me to stay after class and she had actually said to me that the reason why she had been so hard on me, you know, thus far into the program was because she knew that, first of all, um, as a female, it's just a sad reality that like, we will get questioned a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, but also at the time I was more into powerlifting, I had a bit of a thicker physique and that as well, unfortunately, people just, they have their preconceived notions, which are mostly bullshit and that would make it hard for me. And so she was trying to prepare me for that. Um, and to be honest, that was, you know, when was I in school 10 years ago? And to this day she is right. So I definitely do get hate. Um, but I think you're you're gonna get hate in every aspect of your life. No matter what you do in life, somebody's gonna hate you for it. It, do, it doesn't matter. You'll never please anyone. So like honestly, who who cares? You just gotta make peace with yourself and know you're doing what you you want to do, and that's it. Like that's me or not, good. but mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, that's it. The only person you gotta make peace with is yourself. So like at the you know at the end of your life, nobody's gonna care what you did except you. Hey, amen. Amen. That's the word. That's the word of the day. Yeah. That's the word of the day. I like that. I like that. I like that. Okay. Uh, question about, we can talk about music now. We can talk about music now. So who's your favorite artist? Not of all time. Uh, I mean, I guess. Who's your favorite artist right now? Because that's like a lot. Who are you currently listening to that you've been vibing with the Thank most? you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I love Steph Don. I absolutely um, I love her. I know who yeah, she's phenomenal. Like, I, man, I think she is so talented. I have her on repeat, honestly, for the last few months. Um, just everything she's on, everything she's featured on, I absolutely love. What's, <laughs> so the first time I looked, so when I first came across her, right, I just thought, yeah, her name is Steph Landon. Uh, and then I learned that her name was Steph, and it, she does Steph Landon because she's from London. And so Steflon Don and I was like, oh my god, it's <laughs> one of those things That's where funny. it was probably so basic, yeah. But I did not clue in, and I was just like, holy shit, mind blown. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I absolutely love her. Um, uh, there's a reggae artist, uh, Shensia, probably gonna say that wrong, but I absolutely love. Uh, her as well. And then honestly, though, I listen to a big variety. Probably, I'm not a big rock fan. I have a few songs. Um, but like somebody I've always been a huge fan of as well is Cher. Love Cher. Um, so like when I say my mom raised me on everything, she raised me on everything. To be honest, until I was like 10 years old, I don't even think I heard new music. It was all like 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. And so then when I did start hearing new music, I was already like, a big fan good. of different genres. Damn. Yeah. And so now I just listen to everything. Um, but yeah, Steph Don for sure. Love, love, love. Is there anyone uh, there? That, yeah, is there? Oh, you can go. Oh, never mind. Okay, Benny. Okay. Uh, this is <laughs> like a really random question, but I think this is like in the flavor of what we're talking about music. All right. So <laughs> if you're in the rock band, I know you say you don't like rock, but if you're in the rock band, what would you be? Lead singer, guitarist, bassist, uh, or drummer? What's your personality? Um, probably singer. <laughs> probably. That's it. That's um, it. Because, yeah, no, it's like, it's, I, I don't want to say I'm like an attention hog because I don't actually think I am. <laughs> um, but I, uh, I definitely like talk a lot, but even now, like I love singing. I'm one of those people where in my mind, I'm a good singer. <laughs> in my mind uh you know shower singer car singer i love lip singing vibing out um plus i've always been like really big into i know you said same benny so i don't know if you feel this but i've always been big into like lyrics like actually listening to the lyrics listening to the songs mm -hmm. um if it's a good vibe it's a good vibe but like i think so many people miss the meaning of songs because we're just vibing always. out. And man. It's always because of like the background mute, like the background stuff. You kind of pay attention to that more than what the actual lyrics. So this is a lot of songs that we all grew up with knowing like they were really cool. And then when you know the lyrics, it's like, this is dark. This is like obviously creepy. And like yeah. it's like, what the fuck? But yeah. yeah, like oh, yeah. learning lyrics is like, you, you know, when they're good, you feel way more attachment to the artist's. Absolutely. Yep. 100%. 100%. All right. Is there any artist that you're not, not a fan of? No? 
Um, well, here she comes. Let's see. Let's but there, there be like probably more like rock uh, music. <laughs> no, it's not rock. Like for me, I'm so hit or miss. Like I love like you know Three Days Grace, Linkin Park, some of the like you know '90s bands, Good Charlotte and stuff like that. Big fan. Oh, um, okay. But uh, uh, I'm probably gonna even say anything like screamo. Not my vibe. Um, or like, okay. Okay. Is, it, is it like Marilyn Manson? Not my vibe. Um, so Rocky. yeah, that honestly, when you said that, who are you not a fan of? I instantly thought of Marilyn Manson and I literally have not even heard or seen, uh, mm. them in for forever, but, uh, that's probably, yeah, that that's who jumped into mine right off the hop, still haunting me from, <laughs> from the nineties. Um, yeah, that's probably who I'd say. Is there like a, a playlist you have for your, for the gym? Or like a leg day play? Do you separate that or no? Um, yes, I do keep like a gym playlist. I don't, I've gone through phases where I've had like a leg day only right now. It's pretty much just a gym playlist. It is public actually. I think, um, cause somebody else once asked me to share it. So I think it's under Frizzle's bunk. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but it's, a. Uh, it is predominantly like rap, reggae and soca. And then, um, a bit of rock and, uh, like I said, there's, there is some oldies in there. So if you're listening to it and share or like, uh, the Beatles pops on, don't be surprised. It's a weird, it's a big mix. Oh, no. this man loves the Beatles. Be- Benny loves the Beatles. Yeah. The best. Yeah. Benny, what's your favorite Beatles song? Oh my God. Uh, it's a hard one. Hi, hi, hi. There you go. <laughs> So it it was always it's been a tie for a while because I always go back to Oh Darling a lot, mm. but there's some reason I fucking absolutely love Don't Let Me Down by obviously it's John Lennon sings it and it's the rooftop concert mm. scene and I don't know why I think I know why it's just like he's pouring his heart out this is his last mm-hmm. chance for love and he's looking at his girl Yoko right there on the side. Just don't let me down. Like, mm. like you're all I need. Like, I need you. I don't know. It's I have a hopeless romantic heart, mm. and like majority of Beatles songs are just like that. There, there were just a yeah. bunch of teenagers playing in 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 London, just wanting to be loved, and they started off real young. I mean, like in yeah. their fifteen, sixteens, and they only broke up before their thirties. Like when you think about that, it's like what the fuck. They're the biggest band in the world, and they're not even thirty. It's Crazy. so wild. I'm. I just. I have a obviously an Abbey Road poster right here. I have all the albums right here below me. That's uh, awesome. What about you? What Beatles song do you gravitate to most? To? Um. Ever since I was a kid, I always really liked A Day in the Life. Um, oh my god, that is like the cr- most it's... creative song <laughs> ever. When you think yeah, about it, it's, it's two songs into one. It is, yeah, because yeah. how it starts and how it ends is totally different than, uh, you know, the, I guess the, like, I know, I don't know the technical lingo, but, like, the in-between. Yeah. <laughs> the main well, part. Have you ever seen the music um, video? Um, no, actually. So I was going to say yes, but I was thinking, I saw this, the Beatles Cirque du Soleil show, and that's what I was thinking of, because they do that song, which I loved. I didn't expect them to, because it's so different. Um and that's what I was thinking of. I don't think I've ever watched the music video. Is it wild? Oh, it, oh so like the way that the music video is weird because like they it's like somebody recording them doing an orchestra. Like uh, they they invited all these like famous celebrities to do this live orchestra, and it's just like them doing weird stuff throughout the entire oh, okay. video. So it's like them, Mick Jagger. It's uh, just a just really bonkers and weird. You see the personality of each of the band members mm. in this weird video. But yeah, that song is absolutely wonderful. And it's one of those songs too, where I read the lyrics too, where I was just mm-hmm. like, yeah, this kind of seems like a very boring life. Like, you know, like yeah. you get the message, but it's like, that's life. Now, every day is not, you know, it's not some bombastic, crazy adventure. Sometimes totally. it's just really boring. I mean, it's, that's the day in the life, but like yeah. freaking Ringo's drums, John and oh my god, John's voice and Paul's voice is just ah. Oh. Sorry, I, I can go on and on. I can go hey, on. Hey, and hey, on. Hey, it doesn't. It's fine. This is supposed to be. This is supposed to be doing. And they come from. They <laughs> yeah. come from their best album too. Oh my god, yes. one of the best. Sergeant so Pepper's Lonely Heart Cup Land. Woo. 
It's so good. It's, you know, I think everyone thinks of like the Beatles as like Twist and Shout and um, Help and stuff like that. And those are classic songs. Absolutely. But when, as they really got older, which again, yeah, like they weren't that old, but like as their music progressed, the like, they re- they got way deeper and like mm-hmm. um, just more refined in their sound. And when they started experimenting, obviously with drugs, you can hear like that difference. Thanks um, to Bob Dylan. How Dillon. wild some of them get, yeah. Um, and I I love that with the Beatles. Like people always say, like you know that endless question: Are you the Stones fan or are you more of a Stones fan or the Beatles fan? And in no respect, no disrespect to the Stones. I mean, they did their thing. They're a huge band forever yeah. as well. But I am, yeah, Beatles well, all the way. So if we're like the Beatles, there's always the, the big thing I always hear is, are you a, bl- a red album or blue album? So mm-hmm. like the red album is like them yep. young. Uh, I don't have, yeah. the blue, I have blue. I have the blue album in cassette, but this also has like the, the blue albums covered too. Or they're okay. older. It's literally a before. Cool. Where they're all young, clean After shave, we- and then. We do a That's lot awesome. of drugs and why the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they but they're one of the rare bands too where like you hear the evolution like from mm-hmm. album to album. Yep. That's freaking amazing. When you could it just is. transition like you go from poppy love songs to like weird experimental crap. I'm like, what the heck? But this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. No, love it. It's so good. It's a beautiful thing with music. Like it's yeah. music is it has the power to transcend. It's so cool. So I get I get super geeked out. When I talk to <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's I so good. I love it. What's wrong with that, man? I can't huh? contain myself. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, are you are you a nerd? We're, we're nerdy here in this podcast. Are you a bit of a nerd? Are you... Um, you know what, like. I, I am at heart, but I don't, but I'm not, like, I don't know anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, um, do you, do you like, all right, let's see. Do you like, I mean, what do you, I mean, what's your, like, what do you watch? On t- well, I'll go for that. What do you watch on TV or anything like that? Um, again, I want to say, like, I'm pretty diverse. Like, I, like, I, I love, um, thanks to Netflix, I feel like who doesn't love murder mysteries now? <laughs> um, but like, you know, any like pretty much like murder documentary shows, I'm in it. Um, the cheesy stuff, the musical stuff, I'm in it. Um, but I will watch, um, especially because my man is like a really big sci-fi fan. So I, like, and I enjoy most sci-fi, to be honest. Um, Marvel, um, hundred percent. I love, I love Marvel. I've never actually read, I don't think any of the original like comic books, like where these stories originated from, but I've always gone to see the movies. Yeah. Which is actually like, I love to read, but I've just never actually, I don't know why when I think about it now, I've never, uh, gone through the comic books. That's cool. That's awesome. That's that's awesome. Question. Do you, all right. Marvel, the bodies. Okay. Do you have Mm. like, are you like? Do you ask questions sometimes about like how they like transformation, like the transformation of like the characters, or like like Chris Hemsworth, like Captain America, or like you know? Do you ever wonder what their workouts are? Do you look up their workouts or like stuff like that? I have in the past, um, especially when it felt like when a lot of these movies were coming out like every single year. Um, when mm-hmm. we saw you know back to back Captain America, um, Thor, and it's just like especially Captain America's transformation, like that was insane i forget the actor's name um and so i remember yeah there we go thank you um but uh i do remember looking it up and even like now i think a lot of them have come forward and talked a little bit about some of the things they had to follow to like achieve the physiques um i mean it's amazing because no matter what at the end of the day just like a you know a bodybuilder prepping for a show the amount of work you have to put in is insane but it's unfortunate because it's not realistic for most people and it's not attainable for most people. So we are right. looking at them, um, not just from being a fan of, you know, this genre of movie and like the superhero movies, but a lot of people will work at them and be like, I want to achieve that. And like, you can do it, but like, please God, do not follow what they did because it's not, you know, they're trying to get ready for something in three months. And, uh, for most people, you don't have the time to be in the gym, like six hours a day two two uh, you know, two workouts a day eating so restricted like that. Like so again, these are celebrities as well. So they like have a personal chef, they can pay somebody to follow them around. And if they pick up a donut, slap it out of their hand, like it's not realistic for most of us. Uh, amazing. Cause they still did the work, but yeah, it's just not realistic. 
Facts. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, all right, I have one question. So, all right, so, like, what exercise is your favorite? Like, what's your favorite one? Mm. Um, hack squats, 100%. I'm, like, if I compete, I'm, I'm hoping to compete in wellness. So, you know, the girls are pretty much, it's, like, shoulders and legs. Um, quads especially. They're the girls, like, if anybody doesn't that doesn't know, that have really strong, thick legs. Um so hack squats for me, I absolutely love. I am very quad dominant. <laughs> so um, anytime I can work quads, I have an easier time doing so. And I love growing my quads. Yeah, hack squat. I would say it's the exercise I love to hate because it's so painful. Um, but I love it. Uh, other than that, and again, this is why I would compete in wellness. I'm obsessed with like pretty much shoulder day as a whole. Lateral raises is like literally my bread and butter movement. Um, so those two would be my favorites. Absolutely. Okay. This is like the, like, well, this is like always the thing, like your gym crush, how do you approach your gym crush? Do you, do, should you approach your gym crush or do you, are you just like, Hey, let's go there and train and get over it. Or should you just, you know, how, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking for a friend. Asking for a friend. That's awesome. <laughs> um, you know what? Like, it, it's hard because I think females have an easier time approaching than a male does. Um, you know, if we want to go over and talk, I don't think it's as like, I don't think guys get their, uh, you know, care as much. Um, whereas, like, for females, it's totally different because, you know, sometimes, yeah, it's just different. We'll leave it at that. Right. Um, so, like, for me, if I was going to, honestly, I'd probably just start by asking for a spot. Um because okay. then okay. it gives me the chance to like, you know, it's my heaviest set. It's my um, most effort. And uh, I mean, it's probably not going to be the prettiest set. But at the same time, <laughs> if uh, if it's somebody that I'm interested in, he better appreciate the uh, the effort and the strength that I have. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so that's probably what I would do. And then okay. just uh, just go from there. And, and You're like, funny to you're funny. Oh. I had to ask. I had to ask, man. You gotta ask. But people want to know. Was, but people want to know, man. Because that was just out here. When you hard. said it's for uh, it's for a friend, I'm like, oh yeah, is, is the friend in the in the uh, chat right now? Uh, at the bottom, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> just ask it. Just ask it. This is this is a, this is a random question. The question. But, That's um, awesome. Okay. Do you have any questions for us? We usually turn the tables on there. Got on on our person if you have any questions for us yeah you know what this pro and it's probably gonna be um you know a uh may maybe not a cheesy question but like you said i did because i had checked out your guys podcast when you uh you asked me about it and so i saw like i listened to some of your conversations uh, and you guys were talking about you know superheroes and different movies and stuff like that so because i said i've never like read um any of the comics like what is it for you guys like if you were like okay you gotta check this one out or you got to read this based off of either it being different from a movie or your favorite characters. Wow. Like what would you guys tell me to read? Ooh. Do you get All right. Oh, so if you okay. want to like get and understand DC comics, I will mm -hmm. say probably, probably like one of the best places to start in my personal opinion, because I got a couple people into it is there's a comic book. It's a one shot called DC universe. No way. DC universe rebirth. Oh, so basically, yeah. DC Rebirth. So basically, they were having an issue where a lot of the heroes were very edgy at the time, and a lot of the fan base like spoke up, and they wanted a lot of their heroes to be back to their like glory days, almost like characteristic wise, because there was a lot of characters that were with the wrong partner or like they didn't have the support systems that they had, like Superman. So they kind of okay. did this weird meta thing where. They got they got this one major character, which I won't say, messing around with the universe. Basically, he changed certain things to see how would the heroes react to mm. things that were different. Because I because if you read comics prior, you're like, oh man, like Superman had like Lois Lane, and now he's married to Wonder Woman, which was so weird because the root of Superman is he's humanity, he's basically a human at heart so of course he's going to be with a human and or, like it was a lot of things that were weird so this one shot which is 80 pages long it has mm -hmm. basically i think three different artists 
And they basically go to every center point of the DC universe and basically fixes it right then and there. And mm. if you want, it, it's a very easy comic book to get. It's basically with all the superheroes reaching out to this uh, blue light. And you see Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, everybody in this panel. And for DC, I think that's the perfect way to start. But uh, Tev knows a little bit more about Marvel. So what about Marvel, Tev? Marvel? Mm. Ooh, that's a lot. I mean, who do you... Is there anybody that you gravitate to in the Marvel Universe like, that's MCU that you like? Um. Okay, hopefully I have this right. Is is Wonder Woman Marvel? DC. Oh, yes. Uh, hey, it's, you, uh, hey. it's DC. But it's five. That's my favorite character. Okay. That's my favorite character. <laughs> I got you. Look, Wonder Woman Dead, uh, Dead Knight by Warren Ellis. It's a okay. story about her like being in Savage Land. That's what I need to know. Quick, and then like it's DC Black Label, and it's easy. It's a quick story. Bada boom, bada bing. Okay. There's also there's like Earth One, Earth One Wonder Woman. It's like Ooh. a quick story so that way you won't be like get like hammered with all this universe stuff. You it's quick. It's Earth One Wonder Woman. Quick that Grant Morrison. That's easy. Well, like the all one thing. The one thing I can say about DC is. They they do a lot of one shots, a lot of like self contained stories. So like if you're looking for a very mm-hmm. violent, bloody Wonder Woman story that has grit to it, Dead Earth is a good one. That's the with, one. Uh, Dead Earth. Yeah. Dead with, Earth. Is that Warren Johnson, right? Warren yep, Johnson. Warren Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. But like yeah, like that's a good one. If you want like a Harley Quinn like solo mm-hmm. thing where it goes into the depth, and this is probably mm-hmm. the greatest Harley Quinn story I've ever read in my life was what it was called Harleen, right? Uh-huh. Beautiful, yes. Uh, yes. And the artwork is beautiful. Basically, it explains like what happened, and it has Batman is in it, but like he doesn't really fucking matter. It's basically all Harley and all her. What happened with her? Yeah. Like, what happened she, with her? She's an interesting character because she's a doctor, and you see her yeah. go through. The world, yeah, so. you see her majority <laughs> of the time as a doctor because a lot of people always forget about that. She was a doctor. She helped try to help people. But then obviously got sucked in. But it explains also mm. like her life at home, like because you never got that. Cool. You only got the work no. life. So, yes. like DC I has a really. Oops, sorry. Sorry, no. I was just gonna say I'm literally writing this down. So you said it's yeah. called the Harleen. Yeah, yeah Harleen. Uh, one okay. of them dead is a good one. There we uh, go. Yeah. And, and, Invincible is and... really good. That's that was Invincible. one. Okay. That's Invincible by uh. uh what are that? What is his name? Robert Kurtman. Robert Kirkman, and he, uh, it, it's basically yeah. like a superhero story, but like real, it kind of the only one that felt like real life to me, because they were like certain issues to do with body issues, like pregnancy, all types of stuff, like it was real life stuff, I was like... They, they also never... have an animated series on uh, Amazon, too. Cool. That's, 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 that's amazing. It's probably as good as a comic book, which is yeah. so, that's... so, like, so weird, because I yeah. usually always have issues, and I'm like, the show is kind of kind of does some better things with yeah it's really better than the show does but it's really good the invincible is like amazing you'll, you'll probably cry and, and the good awesome. thing is like most of the south like there might be issues probably by because like, i don't know if there's like comic shops nearby the good thing is you can buy certain like most majority of all these things digitally if that's your thing unless you are a physical person huh? you like physical copies so yeah it's all good but any more questions good Sorry, I think it paused on me there. Oh, that's all good. I said, oh, so do you have any more questions for us? No, that's it. Um, you know what? The only thing I, w- I wanted to ask, because I kind of like picked up on it. Um, so, Benny, are you new to working out? You got kind of got yes. like dragged along? That's mm-hmm. awesome. How long you been doing it now? I've been doing it since I think it was March or February. Yeah. It, it was, it was, uh, no, no, it was around mm-hmm. April because, uh, it literally happened out of nowhere because we were doing this show and we mm-hmm. were talking one day and like Tev said to me, he was just like, Benny, because he always wanted me to work out. But like one day he was just like, Benny, you should come out and work out with me and uh, Kate. And I was like, eh, why not? It's Sunday. I have nothing really else to do. <laughs> and that, when I went over there, like I got this set, like the, the, the people at the gym were so kind and generous. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, you got these, you got people that are very into their own self and body, but like you talk to them, they're nice and respectful. Even the owners, like everybody there was just so communicative. And uh, it also helps that not only Tev, like I knew there, I also met 
new friends and I had old friends that worked there too who was actually a personal trainer so like just, mm-hmm. there was already a sense of like uh commodity and like like companionship already awesome. built into there when I got there so I literally was just like you know what sum me up because it was, it was only like 10 15 minutes away from where I live and I'm like you know what I'm, I've I've always talked about really working out and mm-hmm. like Tev was like the, the the last straw like he just pushed me towards it and I was like you know what I'm, I'm sticking with it and I got one of my other close friends to actually start coming now too so he usually goes three to four days a week I usually try That's to awesome. go five days a week because I understand that rest rest is very important because you don't want to overstrain and hurt yourself obviously too and your body needs time to heal and it took a bit took maybe like a week or two where the pain wasn't like constant and now like the only time <laughs> yeah. I feel pain is if if, if I'm if I'm working with Tev and Cade those guys are like push me to the fucking brink but I love it they're respectful about it and I always want to awesome. make sure that when I'm working out, I'm trying to keep up with them because, like, mentality wise, like, I don't want to feel like the the weakest link. Even though mm-hmm. body wise, maybe mass wise, yes, I am. But but in the heart, in the heart, wait, yeah, <laughs> wait, in the heart, in the heart, I'm as equal to them. But I always try to push myself too. That's awesome. So, awesome. so maximum effort. So then, what, yeah. what you guys asked me? What are both your your guys' favorite exercises? Oh, Ooh. I like, I, love- uh, I like, um, I like, oh, I like, uh, well, I don't know. I like, uh, I like, I like leg extensions. <laughs> I like leg extensions. Leg extensions I like. And mm-hmm. squats, I guess, because I'm, I'm okay at it. And I like, I okay. like to struggle. I like to struggle. Yeah. So it's fine. So I like to see, you know what I mean? I like because it's hard. And like, yeah. I, when I'm not good at something, I like doing it. So I try to figure yeah. it out. So like, that's awesome. That's right. But yeah, squats are like that. That's my dream. I love I love chess. I love doing chess. Anything with the chess okay. because I'm not gonna lie, like my favorite part of my entire body is my chest because that's the most mm. standout ish of my whole body. Even though I am slender and lean, just the chest, the pecs, like it sticks <laughs> out. But I also yeah. just love it. I just love feeling just I don't know, like the strain, the power, the squeeze. It's so yeah. good. Oh my god, I, I that's like my favorite part. I love it. Any chest, anything with chest, I feel invincible or strong when I do it. Especially with like when I release and I'm like, ooh, anything. Oh my god, I love it. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so, all right. So we at the end of our show, we usually ask, "What are you listen to or any podcasters do? Are you listening to any podcast or any music like you want to like put out there like?" Um, you know what? I listen the, the podcast I listen to the most would probably be um, something called the Tailored Coaching Method by uh, I think his name is Cody. I think he goes by Boom Boom, um, but it's by the owner of the company that he runs it, and I know his first name is Cody. But yeah, the Tailored Coaching Method podcast phenomenal resource for like information. Um, he's really entertaining, really well spoken. Uh, that's probably my favorite fitness podcast i should probably get into more but honestly that's the one i listen to the most right now okay 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 many what are you listening to right now we listen to what am i listening to besides you obviously uh okay. sorry, sorry that. um <laughs> i've been on i've been listening to uh, what the fuck is his name um john bernthal's podcast a lot so I've been okay. listening to the real ones and basically I'll talk to people from the communities or like maybe like, you know, very controversial celebrities and stuff like that. So I, I don't know. I, I'm always a big sucker for podcasts that usually will get people that like you would just normally never see in the spotlight because obviously they said and done things to really blacklist themselves out. And mm-hmm. so, because for me, like I've never been the person to necessarily, depending on like obviously what they say, to really like block out one person's point of view because in any story or anything, there's always two sides, that person mm. and the truth, obviously. So, I mean, obviously I just, I don't know. I like listening to other people's opinions. That doesn't mean that it's going to really necessarily sway my own and my For thoughts, sure. but it's good to know what everybody in the room is, is thinking. And, you know, mm. obviously when the fact speaks, the fact speaks, but I don't know. I, I'm I'm a big sucker when it comes to controversies. I love listening to stuff mm. like that. And I know it's like weird because you say certain things 
or like you promote it online, like, hey, give this a listen to, and then people will be like, why would you listen to that propaganda trash? I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. I don't know. Here. What about what about what about you, Ted? Uh, I listened to Taylor Swift's new album and the uh, Kyrie Justin. Okay, <laughs> Kyrie Justin's awesome. new album, Taylor Swift album drop. Um, also, I listen to uh, I guess Geek History listen to the podcast do the most because I like nerdy. Th- well, that'd be a good podcast for you, like you, uh, Frizzle, Miss Frizzle. Yeah, because like they 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 take comic book characters or like subjects and they put it in like and they explain it like really quickly. And he's really not like explain like the bullet points of their life, and you can just go and give you recommendations from comics if you want to get to comics, TV shows, anything pop culture, geek culture they're into. Like, so whatever. So, that would be a good like thing for you to start, and then you can read comics, okay. or if you don't want to read comics, you know what I mean? It's like, how you want to go, it's like, how you want to go about it. They give you like the, the like the quick, like 90 minute, like, or like it's like I think an hour presentation of like a character or a show or whatever. So, yeah, I like yeah. that. So, that's yeah, awesome. But, that's all I've been doing. Listen to Taylor Swift. I mean, Curry Justin album. Go buy Curry <laughs> Justin album. Father God, please, <laughs> please. <laughs> I love Taylor Swift, but Curry Justin, please, please. All right, I'll ask for much, man. I really don't. I really don't ask for much. That's but awesome. I want. I want to thank you for coming on the show. I'm mm-hmm. so happy. Even though we had a lot of hiccups and all that stuff, it's okay. We gonna be okay. We gonna be all right. Okay. We did it. <laughs> I got it done. But thank you, Miss Furlow, for coming on. I love your stuff. No. Uh, Thanks awesome. for having me, you're, guys. You're amazing. Uh, where can they find you and promote that. your stuff? Put your stuff out there. Tell us, tell us what you're Yeah, doing. no. Uh, and yeah, no, honestly, thanks for having me. I know uh, for anyone who's like, oh, man, the hiccups, the first one. We were supposed to do this like a month ago, and I had to cancel day up. So thank you guys for uh, understanding there. Um, no worries. <laughs> but uh, you can find me on um, TikTok. Uh, and Instagram under the same username. So literally coach.frizzle. I actually also have another Instagram account that's pretty much all just information videos, which is literally the same as my YouTube, which is the Miss Frizzle of Fitness. Um, so mm-hmm. coach.frizzle or the Miss Frizzle of Fitness. Um, you can find me and uh, and that's where I'm at. Okay, okay. Benny, where can we find you? They can find me on Instagram at Benny J. Blanco and on Twitter at the Benny J. Blanco. And there's also, you know, it's getting cold. I keep on saying this every week. It's getting cold. Your heart's really just <laughs> needs some warmth. If you want to read a nice love story with some comedy in it, read my book, Benny Boy. That's B E N N I E B O Y exclamation awesome. mark. It's available on Amazon for digital and physical copies. What about you, Seven? Uh, you can find me at Sailor Games 18 everywhere, TikTok, YouTube, everywhere. I'm Sailor Games 18. Just find me, whatever, ask me questions, whatever you want. I'm, I don't care. Just, if you need help, call me. If you need to move something, call me. But I'm here. Whatever you need me, call me. That's the thing, okay? Uh, Coach Frizzle, do you have a tip for the day? Tip for the day. Um, Man, throw me on the spot at the end. Tip for the day. <laughs> um, now I'm like, I got to make this good. Make it count. I mean, or you can just encourage me the other day, or just, you know, if you want to rant about something or say something that somebody you want to say to somebody, like, I mean, it's anonymous, just say, like, hey, why'd you do it to me this morning, or why'd you eat my food, you know? Just, just, <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> whatever you're feeling, whatever you're feeling. You know what I'll say? I'll say, um, keep in mind that you can't be committed to both your goals and your excuses. Now, um, with a grain of salt, also don't be afraid to understand that it's okay if your goals change and you don't want to do something that you once thought you did. That does not make you a quitter. It does not make you a loser. Um, but get really clear on what you want to do and stick to it. And don't let those excuses outweigh your goals because otherwise you're going to constantly live in this state of like, you know, being like straddling the line between what you want to do and your excuses to do that. Um, and that's just a wishy-washy life. And you're going to constantly live in a state of wondering why you're not feeling better about yourself. Get after what you want to do and no excuses. Wow. That was bars. That was hot. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Thank you for hanging out. Have a great day. Love you guys. Bye. Take it easy.